Hey everybody, welcome back. Today's Friday. It's Friday all day and uh, April Fool's Day. Uh, calling in from uh, Florida, we got David Antello joining us here on the Spotlight. This is MagnaSearchGroup.tv. Uh, my name's Michael Flint. This is Jason Berard. Uh, today we're speaking with a gentleman that's uh, leading the charge for portable water technology uh, on a global basis. Uh, his company uh, purifies contaminated, undrinkable water and turns it into something that uh, uh, is pristine, clear, and uh, can be drank right on the spot. David, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. You're welcome. So it's a fa fascinating company and very timely company that you've, uh, that's really come into fruition. How long have you been running Ansa Technologies for? Uh, I've been running it for about, uh, fully running it for about six, six and a half, seven years okay. um, in and, this division now. And taking us back into what got you into starting this organization, what got you into, and how has the process sort of happened into, into being where you are today? Sure. Uh, I mean, originally I started in life, I was going to be a doctor. That was my that was my original plan. And then, uh, you know, after, you know, growing up in the 80s, early 90s, you watch yeah. a little bit of the uh, Wall Street and all that. You get you get excited and you see an opportunity to make, uh, you know, the action with money. So got involved in the financial industry from uh, right after college. Did that for about 16, 17 years. Uh, you know, one of the things that that really gave uh a little, a little bit of an advantage for me is seeing how a lot of companies operate, seeing how they, what they do, how they do things, what works and what doesn't. But I always had a certain, uh, there was a, there was a, an itch or some kind of, uh, I guess an underlying drive or passion to do something different, to create something and make some kind of a difference. And that's where it came about. So, um, I and my partners, the two other partners that started the company, you know, he's the engineer, he's a mastermind. I'm, I'm not the mastermind behind the, te the technology. So yeah. he, uh, he, you know, saw the opportunity to to help people when, you know, following, the, for example, the Katrina situation it shouldn't happen in the U.S. where people are dying from, right. you know, disease right here in the U.S. So he started developing, he started engineering a, a product specifically designed for that. So, he then took so this me, was around, just around the same time that that happened then? Yeah, well, he's, this is where the idea came from. That's okay. where he started doing these things. He also lived in Florida, so he had the, the hurricane. So he was personally affected by a uh, water right. situation. There was a hurricane. The power went out. There was no water. So he had to drive, I think it was like something like 40 miles to get up some, some bottled water. We, we didn't expect that kind of a wow. situation. So he yeah. said, you know what, I'm just going to make my own system. So he made a system that could, could purify the water right out of his canal um, that had some brackish water. And then from there, it was, hey, you know what? This is happening here. It's gonna, it, you know, we can make a difference elsewhere. So then the company yeah. was evolved from there, um, and then it just kind of took a light, life of its own after that. Wow. Okay. So the 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 process of the machine in 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 sort of layman terms is you've got a portable machine that you can put in uh, a, like a canal or or an ocean even, and then the water comes through it. That's obviously unfiltered and undrinkable, and through the system. Um, you'll filtrate it or whatever the science behind it is, and then all of a sudden you have drinkable water that can come from these sources. Is that correct? The the main application mm -hmm. was to get water to people that didn't have access to it, and most of these places are obviously third world, and that's where the yeah. technology developed from. So one of the things that we did differently than a lot of other companies is we went from the end user and worked our way backwards. Okay. So that we made it. Uh, we took you know the process is is essentially taking the best technologies that are available. You put them all into one system that's portable, easy to use, has its own power source, yep. and more importantly, um, allows you to enter any environment in any situation and make sure that the water is, is secure. So the, the system uses a, a seven-stage process. I don't know, I don't know if, uh, if that's been shown before, but seven-stage process ending with uh, UV and, uh, and reverse osmosis. And in layman's terms, just think of it as a, a, one, a big um, – like a big colander or a big uh, sieve where the hole is the size of one molecule of water. So anything bigger than that gets trapped. The only thing that gets through is water. So for wow. example, in Flint, the, the Flint situation, you know, um, a part, you know, an atom of lead, a, a lead element that, uh, that is, uh, 25 times bigger. So it'll get trapped by the RO. Um, it also has carbon. So you take any scenario, you take desalination, you take uh, any kind of environment, and you can make the water uh, potable. Uh, there's some videos on our on our site. I mean, we went to a market in uh, in in Benin that was an open water market that all the garbage, and I'm talking about everything, it's the largest market in West Africa. They put everything in that water, and it's salt water on top of it, and we purify that to uh, nearly bottled water standard. So that's wow. the, that's the kind of technologies that are out there now. Wow. 
Yeah, I guess, uh, you know, well, third, like you said, a lot of third world countries don't have access to that clean water at all given times. But for that to happen in your own backyard of the United States, you go, hang on a second, what's going on here? Um, and so do you find that in the U.S. there is access to the, to the clean water except in a time of crisis? Or is there still like unheard of uh, areas in the United States where people don't have that access? There's there you're there if you look at the last ten years there's an there's a, a slow evolution to an era, to a time where there are situations happening constantly whether it be you know right now as we speak there's flooding going on yeah. um, there's a lot of uh, there's some uh, chemical spills that happen in the in in some of the other states um, there's a lot of scenarios that are applicable where people don't have water so that's what our focus is and we never really had a focus on the U S because. It has not really evolved. I mean, we got storms happening in places that shouldn't happen. People aren't yeah. prepared for that. So you need to have something that is, um, I guess, the best way, you know, I don't, whether you're military minded or not, I like to think of it as, you know, the first responders, the Rangers, Navy SEALs, uh, Special Forces, whatever it is, go in first, take care of the worst disaster parts, and then the cavalry comes in later on. So that's, that's we're, we're seeing a lot more of that in the U.S. Um, this Flint situation I, I hate to say it, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot of this already going on, and hopefully, the, with the uh, you know with the with the publicity, although negative, yeah, I'm hoping that the uh, other states and other other government entities can take note and start start fixing the problem before it gets to that point. Now, now a big part of this is infrastructure there, because my understanding is they changed their water source, uh, you know, mm-hmm. from Lake Huron to, to Flint River. And yeah. uh, it, it was based on some corrosive elements of, of that water system that uh, started, I guess, the deterioration or the, com- uh, the contamination or breaking down the actual pipes that are part of the infrastructure. And that's mm-hmm. how the lead's getting in the water, correct? Correct. Exactly what it is. The the normal procedure is when you when you have a water source, you you coat these pipes with a with a with floor with um, different types of chemicals that will will prevent that kind of leaching. Yeah. For whatever reason, you know, and I'm not here to, to argue the politics behind it. Where people lie to, absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, yeah. there were there were warning signs. Yeah. Um, there's people that are fighting that front. My my concern is to to fight the biological side, and that's why we're going we, we're doing the Flint. We didn't go on day one or two or three or 30 because we honestly thought, hey, this thing is in the news. It'll get taken care of pretty quickly. And it hasn't. Yeah. And the big problem is that um, it doesn't matter if they change the, the, the water that's coming in. It doesn't matter if they try to coat them now. It's still going to be an issue because to change that many, that much pipe and infrastructure is going to take, I mean, we're talking years, years. and a lot wow. of money. Um, and the big problem is, is that even if you change the pipe, there's going to be one little part maybe that is going to have that exposure. And now you destroyed the entire water water supply going to your home. So you can have right. completely – every like pipe can be one. replaced but if one little part. So this problem is going to be ongoing and that's why we're doing this program to, um, to, bring, a, to bring awareness. And uh, I mean – Simply put, let me ask you a question. Do you, do you guys drink tap water from right from the tap in where you live? We yeah, do. Yeah, we're, we're, we're in British Columbia, Canada. So okay. we have you drink water right from the tap. Yeah. yeah. Okay. A lot of people, you know, they're not able to do that. And, you know, the United States for, as a whole, 10, 20, 30 years ago, drinking out of the tap or the garden hose was not a problem. Yeah. You can't do that now. There's so many com- 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 uh, chemicals that aren't even registered with the EPA. And that's one of the big problems. So you need some kind of protection against uh, even regular drinkable, allegedly drinkable water. And then I guess the other, like, yeah. well, but I'll let, I, I know you don't want to touch on this side of it, but when you said it's the tip of the iceberg, is that because you feel like um, maybe governments or infrastructure, they've cut costs to- well, It's to, just the way they used to do it's, business. It's, 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 it's not even that. It's it's really, you know, we, we can we can say that, that that is part of it, but more importantly, it's an aging infrastructure. Aging. It doesn't matter how, how good or how much you try to repair something, you can only duct tape things so much before you have to replace it. Replace and the infrastructure it, yeah. in the US is extremely old. You have uh, a lot of a lot of pipes bursting, breaking. There's a lot of corrosion. Fortunately, yeah. there's been enough of uh, you know enough capital in some of the local governments to fix that. But right. eventually, it's that all, it's, it's all going to be replaced. It's got to be re- exactly. It's all going to happen. And with a, with a place like Flint, it's almost like a uh, are they kind of doing like a forgotten city. If they're not going to be able to really replace that, or, or they look at it from a capital expenditure, well, there's, there's over a hundred thousand people there. You can't. Yeah, just... yeah there's a, there's a hundred and four thousand people living yeah. there, and the reality is, is that most of them, you know, I, you know, when, what you see in the news and what you yeah, experience sorry. when you actually go there are very, very different things. Yeah, you actually see. I mean, 
they have water. There's water available to them, whether it be bottled water, uh, you know, they, they specialized triple filters. The problem is, is that their entire life revolves around these bottled water. And that's the, that's the issue that, that's at hand. It's that I talk to families that spend two hours trying to yeah. give their little children baths. And you have to uncap these bottles, put them in there. Now you have about, uh, I think at the average is uh, 50 to 100 bottles a day of these 16.9 ounce bottles that that people use. Whoa. And that's just it's just not practical. And um, not the biggest the problem. Recycling. That's that's the it's the statistics. I think 13 percent only make it to the land to the. Uh, uh, to the recycling centers, thirteen percent. Why is so that? Well, you why, have, why don't they put a law in place for? It's it's just a que- I mean, it's just a question of quantities. I mean, yeah, you're I talking. So. Look, just think of the math. Let's just say, for for example, a hundred thousand people, and and let's say a family, each family has five members on average, and instead of a hundred bottles, they only use you know two, uh, two cases, two cases of water, which is right around five gallons or six gallons. Let's just say that that's the the, the what they use. You're yeah. still looking at a million bottles a day. That's a million bottles a day of bottled water. But the biggest problem, Whoa. you know, aside from the waste, is the cost. There is, uh, you know, I, I don't think you even want to want to imagine the problems that these children are going to have going as they grow older. You don't even want to. It's going to be a, a very difficult problem as they start to see the effects of the lead that that has already been uh, causing sure. damage. Yeah. yeah, I've seen some yeah. of that in the in the media as well. There's already there's already like significantly severe cases of people with yeah. with, lead with damages from from the lead, yeah, um, yeah, because it's so concentrated, right? It's it's a it's a it's a much more, and I think it's uh, it's a, such a bigger disaster than than we even can comprehend. As you said, once you go there, it's a completely different well, scenario. The long term effects as well because right? you don't even think you go. Okay, well, yeah, it's government. They'll, they'll I'm sure it'll get. I'm sure that's what we thought. Solve. I was on a trip. We've gotten calls. I mean, I get calls. Uh, you know, other other people in the company get calls constantly saying, you know, what? Why aren't you guys there? I said, well, we're not really needed there. We're we're for emergency disaster type of responses. We 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 the U S should probably already have this handled. Yep. And the reality is, is that um, unfortunately. In a lot of these areas, they're giving them filters, and, it, and the analogy that I give is, you know, that's like trying to stop a, a 50 caliber bullet with a with a, a notebook. It's not gonna, you, you can't. It's not made for that kind of quantities of lead. So that's why we felt compelled to go there and do this project and show. Yeah. And the biggest problem, and aside from the 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 waste, is the amount of of funds that are being used. Uh, the numbers are simple. I mean, if I could make, if you could make a gallon of water for a penny. Or buy it for a dollar twenty-five. Which one would you do? I mean, it's a, it's a not it's it's not even a question. Yeah. The, the issue is is that all these organizations and most of the water these people are getting volunteered and uh, delivered is from donations. They're not buying it; they're being donated, and someone's paying a lot of money for that. We're just trying to say, let's take this water out of the equation. Make your own water because there's plenty of water. We were sitting making unlimited amounts of water at the uh, edge of the river, yeah. and it's 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 going to be uh, it's going to be better quality than than bottled water. Yeah, and you're able to use recyclable containers that are large enough that people can handle and say, you know what, instead of these little bottles, let me use a five gallon container so or do, a ten do, gallon container. Do you have citizens buying your machines then themselves? Or does or? the government buy it or? Like, right. If we were to if we were to rely on the citizens to do the citizens to do this, it would never happen. This is not a this is not a, a, a very um, affluent um, you know city, and yeah. that's one of the big okay. problems. I know. I read that. So online. what we're trying to do. Yeah. So what we're doing is we're partnering up with some organizations to sponsor uh, the product because when it when a, if you analyze the data and you just analyze the numbers, in a week one unit pays for itself. And from that point forward, you'd never have bottled water waste. You can always use the same containers that are – there's processes to do that and, and sterilize them and try to bring a little bit of normalcy back to these people. How long does it typically yeah. take you to go – does it take your, your machines to take water from the river, even a river such as the Flint River, and turn it into drinkable water? It goes at um, – depending on the, on the weather, in the extreme cold where we were at, we were doing it at about uh, 2.83 gallons a minute. So if you do the math wow. there, it's around 4,000 gallons a day. So if you have even just, uh, let's say, 45-degree water, which is right now probably the temperature, yeah. you can make 5,000 gallons a day, which is 20 pallets. And each pallet of water costs the cheapest we found anywhere online wholesale 
was six thousand dollars for twenty pallets of water. Three hundred dollars a pallet. Wow. Plus, you got to factor in transportation, like the whole transportation. That's now, and now you're talking else, about right? trans. Correct. Now, that, I'm just talking about the cost of yeah. buying the water and magically making it appear in the city. Yeah. So, one pallet, three hundred dollars in a day. We can make twenty pallets of water. So, in a day, we can make six thousand dollars worth of water for about uh, what is it? Two dollars and fifty cents. Wow, that's that's incredible. It's and, really incredible. Yeah. And you're and you're in, you're in Flint right now, or your machines are in Flint right now. Right now, we're going back to uh, we took the machines back um, to do some analysis, and we always look at the uh, you know the effects on the filters exactly how many we're going to need. So we're heading actually back there with the full deployment because the, the biggest the biggest issue aside from the financial is changing people's minds, and yeah. that is the that is one of the yeah. problems that um, people number one didn't want to drink the water. They said you're out, you're absolutely out of your mind, just like every place we've gone to. So yeah. when you drink the water yourself and you say, here you go, I'm drinking it, it's going to be safe. They feel a little bit more comfortable. They take a sip. And then before you know it, people start to say, OK. So what we want to do is we want to uh, you know, start to change people's minds. It's not like we have uh, some magical technology. This technology exists. It's been around for a while. We've just put it together in a way that, that uh, is, is, is catered, you know, catered directly for these kind of situations. So once you change people's minds and you say, instead of buying water, why don't you make your own water yeah. with like a, a little mini plant, uh, power, uh, water plant, so to speak. And it's easy to use. Um, we sent uh, for the Ebola crisis in 2014 at the height of it. There was uh, problems with people hydrating and yeah. they're giving people water directly in, in these countries, in, in Liberia, specifically in Barkadu. They were giving people water directly from the Lofa River. I'm, and I'm not talking about even putting it through a t-shirt, just from the river, giving it to patients. And that's why everybody died because of all the, all the contaminants. Whoa. So we sent, we sent some, so an organization said, hey, we need to get these units. So they sent a couple of the, uh, the, the units over there. We didn't, I didn't go, we weren't allowed to go, uh, you know, oh, it was a yeah. high risk. Yep. All we did was send a 10 minute uh, video, the equipment, and they were able to set it up in about an hour. So wow. when you combined ease of use, Compact portability, the ability to make water and monitor it, easy to use, that's the formula. So uh, the, the government is probably going to get involved at some point here yeah. with, with Flint. There's a lot of common sense with, with what you're, you're, you're sharing with us here. It, it sounds like the biggest obstacle in, in terms of making an immediate impact is the educational component. That is the biggest problem. The biggest issue is that if you were to poll, I would say 99% of the people in the, in the country would say yeah. – I don't think there's any real way to do that. I'm, you know, there's got to be some really complicated, big equipment and processing plants that must be involved to do this. Yeah. And there really isn't. So we're able to provide that kind of uh, massive, in, you know, industrial capability and put into a small, uh, portable, portable unit. Yeah. And I think as people start to realize, and that's why we did what we did. We didn't go there and deploy fully because people just don't want to believe that you can do that yeah so you had to show that you had to you had to uh, demonstrate that now on this next trip we're going to be making uh we have sponsors and people that are working with us we're going to make a lot of water for people we're going to let them see um and it'll be tested by third party you know not yeah. not even the apa third party trustworthy um sources that the the people of flint truly do trust they're going to test our water and say give it the thumbs up and say Go for it. It's okay. Yeah, because yeah. I, I get the hesitation there. Obviously, would be from looking at the river and, and understanding some of the, the damages that have already been caused by the lead, and mm. the fact that you're taking water from that supply and trusting this machine out of kind of out of nowhere. Well, it's really. kids too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, you go, you, think, yeah. of the, think of the fear factor with your kids. With your kids, that's the, the big one is the kids. Thing. I don't I want agree. my kids. To, and then, yeah. Yeah. as long as you can, like you said have it to like the, where there's absolutely no room for error and you get it approved by a, a third party reserved um, trustworthy source yeah. uh, and then you know for example as, as the owner yourself you you take the sip I think that that creates that trust and knocks down that barrier of reservation that someone would have and then maybe at that point you can really start to drive that uh, that innovative change that, that you know your, your company is based off of right you're looking to drive change and, and change the way that people uh, interact with water sources. Well, it seems also like a technology that's, that's uh, you know, you have the right technology at the right time in the world, you know, just with respect to um, the, the number of places, uh, you know, globally that do not have access to safe drinking water. Um, can you can you do it through from the ocean? 
Can you take yes, ocean it water? Yes, that's yeah. that's what it's that's what it's primarily designed for desalination. So desalination. we can take we've uh, there's if you go to our site, you know, I'll give that to you later. You can go and you see some demonstration. There's a couple of organizations that have done uh, some videos at cool. the ocean. We've been at the Atlantic Ocean, stuck it in the water, and and made drinking water out of it. Um, it's been you know it's been on the news a couple of countries: uh, Benin, Cameroon. Um, but even, Calif- Liberia. even California had a pretty, and it, pretty does, significant yeah. crisis last last summer with the droughts and everything like that, right? Yeah, we're actually two, two uh, we're things. actually doing we're actually working yeah. with an, a private company that's looking to prepare people for a possible situation that may occur there with the you know the earthquake. There's a lot of uh, preppers that are preparing for possibly something like that. That's that's what they need. Um, coastal lines, you know, islands. There's a lot of different places that have a lot of water. And uh, one of the places specifically that we went to in Benin, it was, they were drinking out of a well that had tadpoles or some sort of uh, small fish swimming around in it. There was stuff floating around in it. And it was exactly 22 yards away from salt water. And it was, this is unlimited amounts of salt water and they can't drink the water. So when we converted, they, they, they completely didn't believe it. And by the end, there's also another video on our link that shows them fighting over the water that we were producing. So desalination in a lot of places around the world is just not possible. And this is something that I think is, has to change very quickly. There's a lot of technologies that are, that are coming in. And um, as a company, what we're doing is we're gathering all this technology as it gets developed and we're implementing into the system. Uh, graphene is a big thing. You're going to hear a lot about graphene in the next probably five years, which is a, which is a, a way to desalinate with, with a fraction of the amount of power you need now. Interesting. Interesting. Would it be mm-hmm. fair to say that you'd have a, an element of your business as an emergency preparedness? Product? That's what that's what we're doing. That's that's okay. what we're working with right now. We uh, we work with Samaritan's Purse, for example. Samaritan's Purse just purchased units for from us to uh, for their field hospital, and yeah. that's one of the applications. Uh, we're going to be proactive. talking to correct. They're being they're a very proactive organization, very yeah. impressive with their technologies and what they do. I think that eventually, I mean, the Red Cross right now, unfortunately, doesn't own any water purification technology. Um, you, you have, you have, uh, for example, even FEMA, they don't have any water purification technology. They borrow it from the military or they borrow it and they rely on bottled water. So I think mm-hmm. that people need to, you know, change their minds. And as people change their minds and say, there's why, why makes, uh, transport something when it's Maybe. around us, yeah. uh, name the last disaster that didn't have any water around it. Yeah. Can't. Floods, uh, tsunamis, uh, Flint situation. Well, I've just um, even thinking about here in Vancouver. You know, I mean, we're in an earthquake zone, and you know, there's there's, al- there's always uh, news that talks about you know being ready in your own home in your home environment. And, and you know, for fresh water, they recommend they give you a bunch of these little pills that you would just put in a water source. The problem the problem with that is that yeah. those little pills only kill bacteriological uh, situations. Yeah. You cannot get rid of uh, you know one of the things that unfortunately that I want Flint pe- uh, people. Uh, that are watching the Flint and tracking the Flint situation is Legionella is going to start popping up very quickly because now that the summer months are coming, you're going to have a lot of perfect environment for bacteria. Bacteria. So those little tablets kill anything that's alive, but lead unaffected, Um, iron, copper unaffected by that. So you need to have a complete disinfection and elimination of contamination. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. that's, That's interesting. Yeah, well, well, that's amazing. Thank you so much for for spending the time and sharing some more awareness yeah. on Flint. And uh, David, tell us where can uh, where can people find you? Uh, you can go to our website at www.ansatechnologies.com. A N S A Technologies.com, or you can do the same search on Facebook, and it's got a lot of videos, a lot of footage. Um, you're going to see a lot more footage from Flint in the upcoming uh, months as we progress and show how this technology is is going to help people get back to some kind of a normal life where they don't have to uh, rely on people to bring them water instead of uh, making their own. Thank you so much for joining us on the spotlight. Thanks for having me, guys, and I appreciate you spreading the awareness of what's going on. Absolutely. David Antello, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. Happy April Fools. And, uh, And, yeah, we'll see you next week. Thanks, David. 